Uh, in uh, Toronto, we have uh, Ruby Dalla, and out west in Vancouver, we have Don Davies from, there they are, we have Don Davies from the NDP, and here in the foyer is James Rajat for the Conservatives. Before I get to you, Mr. Ignati gave quite a speech today, uh, quite a blistering speech. If you're a Conservative, let's have a listen at some of that. Mr. Harper has allowed this country to slip to become less than the sum of its parts. And now is the time to invest wisely so that this country once again becomes more than the sum of its parts. Enough with the games. Enough with the attack ads. Enough with the divide and rule. Let's try and do what's right. I swear to you, I will try to do what's right for my country next week. James Rizat, the Conservatives' response to what Mr. Ignati had to say. Well, I mean, clearly he's, he's indicating that he's willing to look at the budget and take a serious look at it and then decide whether he supports it or not. He's indicated in general what types of things he would like to see in the budget. I think the Prime Minister and Minister Flaherty have both had dialogue with Mr. Ignatieff and with the Liberal critics on these issues. And hopefully the budget will pass uh, next week in the House of Commons. So not responding to the, what about the negative attack ads and the division, no to that? You say what to Well, I, I guess I would just say, I mean, we're trying to keep it positive. We're trying to keep it on, on the policy issues. Uh, you know, I mean, politics is a very competitive business, as you all well know, Graham, but I think it's a fair statement in the sense that we should all, during this time, perhaps put partisanship down a little bit and, uh, and focus on what we can do for Canadians. Ms. Stella and then Mr. Davies, what do you say to that? It sounds like Conservatives are sending uh, signals of conciliation here. I think that uh, James needs to be advising the Prime Minister much more often because I think when you take a look and talk to Canadians, uh, you know, uh, Graham, there are thousands of people out there losing their jobs and you only have to come to my riding of Brampton Springdale. I was with constituents all day and uh, there's a company called ABC Plastics has closed down. The Siemens factory closed down. People at Chrysler, you know, they're, they're losing their jobs and people are struggling to make ends meet. They're looking for real leadership. They're looking for hope for a better tomorrow. And we have seniors across this country, Graham, that are having to make that choice between whether they fill up their medicine cabinet, do they fill up their fridge, or do they fill up their gas mm -hmm. tank. We need investment. We need to ensure that we're reaching out and giving those people hope. And that's what Michael Ignatiev spoke about today at his luncheon. Mr. Davies, I hear all of that, but I also think that some Canadians would say, you know what, not, all of that is not Mr. Harper's fault. Won't you have a difficult argument to make that it's all Mr. Harper's fault? Well, it's Mr. Harper's government. Uh, I think as Prime Minister he has a greater responsibility uh, since he's got uh, greater decision-making powers. You know, listening to Mr. Rajat talk about conciliation uh, makes me laugh. I, I was in the House of Commons during the throne speech when uh, Mr. Harper's government claimed to take a more conciliatory approach. They claimed they understood minority government and then I watched them pursue what can only be described as one of the most divisive uh, parliamentary programs uh, in recent Canadian history. The fact is, is that they can't be trusted. Uh, Prime Minister Harper has proven that time and time again and, and I don't expect that anything I see in the budget the Conservatives will follow through on. And Graham, one thing I can say, you know, it's all really been well, about gimmicks and these negative attack ads and people are really looking for that leadership right now. I want James Rajat to respond to that. It is a fair point that, that the government has said these things before, and then there is that, that economic statement that you have climbed down from, but people look at that and they say, uh, well, are they going to do it again? But I think even if you look at the economic statement, there were some measures in there. Clearly the opposition disagreed with uh, subsidization of political parties. We have a disagreement on that. But the government actually removed that over the weekend. So the reason for them be opposing the economic statement was actually removed. And I think that's what Canadians want to see, is a dialogue. If the government introduces something the opposition doesn't like, let's have a dialogue. We clearly need the support of at least one other party to pass anything in the House of Commons. And I think we've shown that in the past, whether it's the Federal Accountability Act, whether it's the two budgets, the softwood lumber agreement. We've actually shown in the past we have worked with other parties, and we certainly hope we can do so in this parliament. Ms. Dalla, what about that? What if the Canadian public settles on the notion that they were mad at Mr. Harper, they thought he made a mistake, but at least he climbed down, and it's not re uh, reason enough to take him out of office in the middle of a crisis uh, where we need things done in a budget. What do you say to that? You know, until he prorogued the House, he did not have the confidence of any of those people that are elected and, you know, represent constituents and Canadians from across this country. People are looking for leadership, and this is a time to put partisanship politics aside, to do the right thing for those that are struggling to make ends meet, for those seniors that are having to make very difficult choices. And I can tell you from the session that I was in in the House, uh, there wasn't any display of that type of leadership. It was all personal politics, negative attack ads. It was all a bunch of gimmicks, and people do not trust Mr. Harper. They do not 
not trust the Conservatives because they haven't consulted, they haven't listened. And this is the same Prime Minister, you know, with Stephen Harper and the same Conservative government that was saying that our country wouldn't even have a recession, that we wouldn't have a deficit. And yesterday, you know, he says that we might have a $64 million deficit. You know, where is the trust there? Where is the leadership? And people are looking really for hope. And that is what Mr. Michael Ignatieff and the Liberal Party are hoping, you know, to provide to uh, Canadians as we move forward. But, Ruby, I think a fair statement, I, I mean, I hear a lot of statements from others saying, well, we ought not to be partisan, we ought to collaborate more. And frankly, on the programs like this, all I hear is sort of criticism from opposition parties. I think what we're looking for is a real dialogue on issues. Let's put forward issues. The people you talk about in your writing, it's the same thing in my writing. People are struggling, industries are struggling, and we need to get together on this. So let's put that stuff aside. I think perhaps in, the, in 2008, Things got a little too hot, so let's lower the temperature here and talk about some real issues. Ms. Della, and, and that Mr. is why, you know, I, um, James. That is why, you know, uh, Mr. Ignatieff, as our as our leader for the Liberal Party, has has publicly stated that we are not going to be making any decisions until we see the budget, until it's brought forward, and we're going to see: does it provide good. protection for the vulnerable? Does it save jobs, and does it create jobs for tomorrow as well? And we are going to have an emergency, you know, caucus meeting on Tuesday evening. He's going to consult with the caucus. He's going to listen to the people. And all of us are coming back from our constituencies and know the stories of the struggle that Canadians are facing firsthand. And, uh, you know, Mr. Ignatieff and the Liberal team is not going to be making any decisions uh, until we have seen that budget, until we've consulted and we've listened. Mr. Davies, what about the notion that I raised with Ms. Dalla? What about the fact that Canadians might have been mad at him before, but he's climbed down and it's not worth going to an election potentially? What do you say to that? Well, there was a reference to Mr. Harper making a mistake. There's a difference between mistakes and deception. Uh, Mr. Harper uh, has a long pattern of deception. He claimed that he wouldn't uh, touch income trusts. He claimed that he wouldn't uh, appoint people to the Senate. Um, just 60 days ago, his own finance minister was claiming that we'd have a small surplus this year, and now we're looking at a $34 billion deficit. Now, that's either incompetence or it's deception. And the New Democrats have simply lost confidence in, in this Prime Minister and his government because they simply can't be trusted. It doesn't matter what's in the budget next week. Uh, what matters is, is that they, uh, they won't follow through on their promises. Uh, okay. A budget or two ago, they promised $30 billion in, in uh, funding to the municipalities. And in the big city mayor's meeting last week, we, we asked them how much money they got, and they said none. So they can promise okay. anything they want in the budget. So it's not so about putting thank you words all. on a piece of paper. I do want to thank you all. It matters, it matters what's, what's in the what's budget, in the budget for lots of people, but uh, we will Absolutely. obviously see you all back here for an extraordinary week uh, next week. A good discussion here. Yes. Uh, Mr. Davies in uh, Vancouver, Ruby Dalla in Toronto, and here in the foyer, James Rajat. Thanks very much.